we have excavated over 600 footprints along the banks and on private property of uh, the Paluxy River. Among them, over 90 human footprints. But if that is true, and it certainly is, because we have at the Creation Evidence Museum some of the original human footprints excavated on private property, and we've run spiral CAT scans through the rock to show they were not carved, they were not fabricated. This is the Alvis Delk print, discovered on the McFall property. And in the vicinity, we have discovered seven other human tracks the same size, 11 and a half inches in length. You see the great toe, second, third, fourth little toe, metatarsal arch, medial instep section of the longitudinal arch, the heel, this. But it's intruded by an Acrocanthosaurus dinosaur track, and it is forward motion, push some of the consolidated mud, the compressed mud, push some of it back up into the human track. That's man and dinosaur living contemporaneously. But there are other ways that we uh, can determine if something is genuine. And it's the compression density underneath. You can carve a footprint, but you can't carve the compression that is made when you step there. Plus, you can't carve the change, the rocking motion but we can read that with a spiral CAT scan. We can read the motion, the step, the transfer, the transfer, and the step forward. We can determine that with spiral CAT scan. This has been spiral CAT scan. So wh why the spiral CAT scan? What would the purpose be? Why did you have to go through that test? Now that's a very good question because tracks can be carved. Can you tell a carving from an actual footprint just by examination or does that spiral scan show you what you need to the know about? The spiral CAT scan is almost necessary for the following reason. You can carve all of the surface details of a track, but you cannot fabricate the compression density under that track. So the mud below the track, if it doesn't have that compression density, it had to have been carved. It had to be carved. 